We are going to finish up Excel. Yay! So why don't you yodel on over to where you saved the grade book we started working in Excel with and open that up. And it should look pretty similar to mine. The last couple things I'm going to teach you to finish up Excel are some quick little hacks to make things that you do in Excel just a little bit easier. The first thing is what's called the now function and the now function actually gives us the current date and time. So let's say I'm adding the date and time I'm making this grade book. Well first let's insert a row where we can put this information. I want to put it in between rows 2 and 1. So I'm going to right click on the 2 and I'm going to choose insert. And now I've got this really huge row up here. I don't need it that big so I'm going to hover in between the 2 and the 3. Make it a little smaller. And then cell A2 I'm going to type date and it's crazy right now. Okay, don't worry, we'll fix that. And now I want to have Excel return to me the current date and time whenever I open this sheet. So, because we're putting in a function, which is a pre-made formula in Excel, I'm going to start that with equals, and the date function is just called now, because I want it to tell me when is right now. So I'm going to type in equals, now, and then parenthesis, parenthesis. And notice it did pop up with that little tooltip to help me if I forgot. Once I'm done with this function, I just press enter. And you're going to see that it's inserted, if I make this a little bigger, my current date. So now I can format this now date function to look a little differently. Remember, we just used this number group up here on the home tab. And I can drop down and I can choose short date or long date, or if I want more formats, remember that's under more no number formats. So I'm going to choose more number formats. I'm going to be able to choose a variety of different dates and times that I could have this look like, as long as I choose from the date and time option. Or if I choose date on the left, I could choose the date to look specifically like one of these. So maybe I want this one that gives me the, the day, the month, the date, and the year. So that's OK. I click OK, and it will change that format. Now, this is going a little crazy with my font, and so I want it to actually be smaller. I want this date and the time stamp right here to look like ID number, first name, and last name. So I could click on one of those cells, and I would see that that cell is formatted to be bold in the font antique number 14, and it's size 11. So certainly, I could go up to date. I could make sure that I bold it. I make sure that I put it into antique number 14 and I bring it down to size 11. And you notice it's taking me freaking forever. Okay, that just took me like 10 seconds. Now, if I didn't want to do that, I could do something a little different called using the format painter, which is this lovely little button that looks like a paintbrush up here. The format painter is going to copy any formats applied to a specific cell and then it lets you paint another cell basically with that same format. So if I wanted date to look like first name, I am basically going to dip my paintbrush into this cell, and then I'm going to paint over this cell, and it'll come out looking like this. So I need to click on the cell I want it to look like. So I want it to look like first name. I need to dip my paintbrush in, so I need to click Format Painter. Okay. Now it's got marching ants, so that's what it's going to look like. Anywhere I click Chunky Plus, I'm going to paint that cell to look like what's highlighted. So if I click Date, my date is now bold, antique number 14, and size 11. Now the Format Painter can also do multiple cells at once, so I wouldn't have to always go here, up to Format Painter, click a cell. Go back to my cell, Format Painter, click a cell. Instead, if I hover over Format Painter, notice that it says FYI to apply the formatting in multiple places, double click the Format Painter. So just to give you an idea, let's go ahead and we'll make these with a yellow background. And if I'm wanting to apply this yellow background to the date and my actual now function here and maybe these cells over here, I'm going to double click my Format Painter after I've selected the cell I want it to look like. And if I click Date, notice I still have my paintbrush next to my Chunky Plus so I could go and I could like 
format 15 billion cells if I wanted to. And it will continue to keep that formatter painter on until I uncheck format painter and say, hey, I'm done. Now, when I copied the format of first name, its number formatting was general. And so when I switched this to be just like first name, it took my now function and it made it general. I need to change this back to my date. So I can use one of these dates again, or I can go to my more number formats, pick my date from the left, and we were using the second one down. So sometimes when you use the formatting painter, you do need to go back and just fix a couple issues if you are working with number formatting. Another quick trick I can do is if I have a lot of cells and columns up here and all of a sudden my workbook is getting really, really long, I can take this text and I can rotate it in its cells so that it squishes my text and condenses it into one. So I'm going to select the cells I want rotated and right now I'm just going to rotate tests one, two, and three. And then if you go up on the home tab under this alignment group, See how AB has got this arrow pointing kind of upward? If you click that, you can choose which rotation you want. So I could have it going counterclockwise and it angles it up. I could put it straight up and down. I could put it that way, sideways. Or if I choose format cell alignment, I can use this orientation box right here, this little button. I can click and drag a specific number and as I drag it notice it's changing my degrees so if I want it to go downward at 60 degrees I click that now it's downward at 60 degrees fit so at this point you should have inserted a new row right above ID number and put in the date and used the now function to return the specific date you should have also rotated your tests right there um, you can pick any rotation you want just so long as they're rotated and we're auto fitting onto one page like this. Now this next trick is one of my favorite things in Excel and it works just like the fill handler. So let's do a quick recap of what the fill handler is and how to use it. I just click on the cell I want to copy. In the bottom right hand corner, I wait for the little plus and then I click and I drag and that's actually going to copy that minimum function all the way over. So like I said, the fill series is going to work the same way as the fill handler. Now, the only difference is it does it for series of numbers, series of words, or patterns. So let's test this out. Now, what I could do is I could type test four and hit enter. Then I could go up and I could hit test five. That just took me five seconds. I could also copy what I have in test three and paste it over. So I could do control C. And notice when I copy, what I have copied turns into marching ants. If I want to paste, I have to click where I want my answer, and I can do Control V, and that will paste it. And then I would have to go in and change it to Test 4. So I could do it that way. Again, takes kind of like five seconds. So all of those things, copy, paste, typing, took a while for me to fill in Test 4 and 5. The Fill series is going to let me fill in Test 4 and 5 with just one click and drag like the fill handler did. So if I'm filling in a series, and in this case I know I have a series because I have one, two, and three, all I need to do is click the last value of my series, go to the right hand corner in the bottom till it turns into that plus, click and drag. And notice it's popping up and it's already telling me the next value is going to be four and five. And if I let go, boom, it's done. Now see how this little plus thing came up? If I click on that, I have fill series selected. So sometimes it might just actually come across as test three and test three. You might have to actually click down and choose fill series in order for it to add the series this way. Now you can do the fill series with a couple different things. For example, I can do one here, and let's say I wanted to do two, three, four, five. As I go across, see here's an example where it just copied the one. But if I click and change it to fill series, it's now filled in one, two, three, four, five. Now you don't have to just go to the right. Let's say I started with five. I could grab and I could drag backwards and do the fill series. And now it has filled in behind. Uh, you can also do the fill series with like months. So January 
And if I click and I drag January, notice it's filled in my next couple months. If I click February, March, April, May. The fill series works with quarters, like in school. So quarter one, and I can click and drag quarter two, quarter three, quarter four, and then it would restart, obviously, at quarter one. So the fill series does a bunch of different things. It also does patterns. So if I go one, three, my next number would be five because I'm counting up by twos. If I want to keep going, I'm going to select both of them because it's a pattern. Bottom right hand corner till I get the plus, and then I'm going to click and drag and notice it's it's still counting by twos for me. Three, five, seven, nine. So the fill series is really nice when you're doing a big long series of information. Like I said, it works left to right. So if I had done three, five, and I didn't have the one, I could click and I could drag back and it would find the one. It would even go to negative one because it counted backwards again that way. So fill series, really fun, really cool thing. Love doing it in Excel. So I want you to go ahead and make sure you've done test four and five using the fill series. Then go ahead and fill in some fake data for test four and five, and then use your fill handler to pull your totals function over, to pull your max function over, your min function over, your average function over. Okay, so we've got all those things. And if you're coming up with these errors, it's maybe because you don't have any numbers. Once you put the numbers in, it'll start filling in the data for you. So go ahead, use that fill series to come over that way and practice using the fill handler again as well. So that takes care of all the rest of some nice little hacks that you can do in Excel to make things easier for you. At this point, if you have data entered for tests four and five, make sure you do a final save as gradebook to your OneDrive Triton computer apps folder and the current week, and then go ahead and submit this to Schoology. Then you're going to work on the Finding Fill Series assignment on Schoology just to practice using the Fill Series a little bit more. I can do this. I can do this. I got to trick myself. Boy, look at that. What? Ah!